All right, what is going on, everybody? Welcome back to another episode on What the Sheet. And in today's episode, the plan for today, uh, today's Friday, um, and we're, like I said, the plan for today, I know, I think I mentioned this in the past, so we're going to put some insulation up in the attic space or the crawl space, whatever you want to call it, above my garage here. So I got the gas heater running in the back and it's warmed up now so we're I think it's like 30 maybe almost 40 degrees out today so the heaters keep the garage nice and warm it's probably 60 degrees in here it's nice and comfortable I got the ceiling fan running to just kind of keep the air circulating the heater does have a little blower fan on it that pushes some of that heat out so that helps a little bit but I like to keep that fan running just to move more air um, around I've thinking about putting a box fan in that corner over there just to push more of the heat kind of this way in the main part of the garage because when I'm working on the other side of all this insulation here that's kind of my normal work area and when I'm over there it's fine it's nice and warm it's probably 70 degrees um, probably almost close to 80 degrees um, right now uh, but then over here where we park our cars um, so right now the wife's got her car here in the truck can't fit because of all the insulation but over here it's a good 10 degrees cooler than it is in the third stall so my plan is to get this insulation thrown up top to help keep more of the heat down here because if we go up our fancy little ladder here so this is what my kind of crawl space attic space above the garage looks like right now and as you can see there's kind of some random stuff up here I, I think that's like an old mini freezer or mini fridge there's random piece of sheetrock um, there's random boards kind of laying around to step on and piece of plywood there's old bits of siding up here there's random pieces of carpet from when they put carpet in and there's just kind of random bits and bobs laying around there's some like old deck chairs or something like that laying up here that's got to go and there's just kind of a lot of random stuff laying around up here. So I want to get that organized and cleaned up a little bit. And a lot of this stuff I'll probably, you know, honestly just end up throwing up there um, for right now. Just because I, I just want to get it out of the way and get this insulated. And um, basically all I'm going to do is roll it out in between the rafters here. And the other thing I got to worry about or not really worry about, but handle is the electrical. So all the wires for the house all run through this crawl space over to the junction box that's on the wall in the garage. And then this yellow wire, which is right here, this is the power source for our fireplace that's going in the basement. Um, but it's not hooked up yet to the box. I have to have the uh, woman's dad come over and hooked that up for me because he's an, actually an electrician. So what we've done already is before we finished putting the ceiling up in the basement when we remodeled, we ran a new wire. So we're gonna have a whole separate breaker for that fireplace. But I gotta get the wire run all the way over there. So when we go to hook it up, I'm not having to come over here and crawl over all the insulation and mess with all that stuff um, when that time comes. So I want to make sure I get that set up first before I start laying an insulation down. And my plan is to start over here because the furnace is kind of back over there along that wall and come probably to about here. Um, so I got three, four bays uh, in between the rafters to do. And then once I get to here on this side, I'm going to jump all the way over to the basically the front of the garage and work from that point back this way. And that way I'm not having to kind of crawl over anything. And the first probably bay will be a short bay and then the rest of them should be just full lengths of insulation going from one side to the other. And and I in all actuality I might have more insulation than I need, which is fine by me, because then I can return some and get some of that money back. But this shouldn't, in theory, take too long. It's just more of kind of cleaning this, some of this stuff up and 
like that got to come down get thrown away and like some of this plywood and random stuff that's laying up here i'll just gonna stuff away for somebody else to deal with because i really don't want to deal with it right now but like that stuff's got to go so i'm gonna get you guys set up somewhere up here i'll probably hang you up up top there and kind of show you the process of laying all the insulation out it's not too complicated um over here will be kind of difficult just because i got to be careful because i can't step at the stay on the rafters just because um this right here that's actually the sheetrock for the garage so like i don't want to step on that and fall through and there are some holes over there but i'm not worried about patch them just because it's a garage so it doesn't have to be pretty so that's going to be the the only part that's going to suck is carrying the rolls up here and then unraveling everything and getting it all tucked in nice and neat without stepping on the, the sheet or having a solid place to step so like i said i'm going to get this clean picked up up here get all like the random stuff off of the ceiling so that I, when i'm laying the sheetrock down i don't have to deal with as much stuff kind of being in my way and then once we get to the point where i'm actually throwing some rolls down i will come back to you guys all right so a little up a date so i got everything cleaned out that i wanted to oops there you go um but so the next kind of issue i'm running into is all that insulation that's kind of along the edge there in the corner where the roof kind of meets the the roof of the house meets the roof of the or the ceiling of the garage that insulation has to go because behind that is the eave of the house so that's where the overhang of the house is and what's supposed to happen is where that's um where all the insulation is there's like kind of a venting underneath there and that's supposed to allow fresh air to circulate through in all this space in here and that way you don't get any moisture or mold or any of that jazz building up inside here and you probably can see it a little bit on the camera but right where i'm shining my light those three four bays that's right where kind of the entryway of the house is and there's a another peak from where the house kind of meets the garage and there's kind of a wedge going along the roof line there and the front of the house there's a big ice dam right there and on the inside here you can actually see where that water is soaking through um through the shingles and the tar paper and all that stuff and it's actually soaking into the plywood underneath which um, luckily since it's OSB it's not that big of a deal um, all I really have to do is just get that out of there let that air out and then dry and then we'll, we'll be good to go so what I have to do is I have to go through um, probably starting with I guess all of these bays these ones I don't have to do anything because this is all attached to the house there's nothing there but all those spots along this side and on that side all have to come out but the problem is, since it's so far away, it's kind of hard for me to get back there. So what I'm going to do is I have um, a little um, marker pole that you could use for the winter time to mark your driveways or sidewalks that you can find at Menards, Home Depot, Lowe's, all those little hardware stores. It's just a little spindle, basically. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick that into the, in, into the insulation there and just kind of pull it out and get it back and then all of that insulation is actually going to get tossed and then when i lay the new stuff down i'm not going to go all the way to the edge there i'm going to leave a little bit of a gap so basically where the metal plates are and where kind of the the wood meets so those two by sixes or two by fours meet there that's where i'm going to stop with the new stuff that way it allows that air to come pass over top of it and vent all of this in here so even if it does get cold or hot or whatever temperature difference there is up here it'll still be able to vent out the sides like it's supposed to and i'm not quite sure why they would do that because it defeats the entire purpose of putting soffits and usually if you block off the sides like that they'll put in a, a ridge vent 
up top in the peak, but there are none in, in here. So I don't know if the guy who built this house just, just didn't know what the heck he was doing or what. But let it, again, though, this house was built uh, in 96, so this house is 25 years old. So building codes were a lot different back then as they are now. And instead of cutting a hole in my roof or climbing up there, cutting a hole and putting in a ridge vent and all that jazz, I'm just going to pull the insulation out off the edges, let it breathe up here. That should take away some of the moisture issues I'm having in the front of the house and some staining that I'm getting on the garage doors and uh, help with the ice dams and all that stuff on the other side too. So I'm going to go through, pull that insulation out, and then we'll get to laying the stuff down and then we'll be done all right so we got all the soffits opened up that need to be so on this side let me grab a light you can kind of see that these first two bays right here they don't need to be open because they're blocked off so there's nothing there that they need to vent but everything else is opened up and you can kind of see the glow of the light coming in from the outside. That's how it should look. And in some instances, you'll see um, they'll put up um, either like some house wrap or something like that. They'll staple it up the wrappers a little bit. And then, and that's usually in preparation for like a blow-in insulation. So what they'll do is they'll, they'll go up, you know, however deep you plan on doing the, ins they plan on doing the insulation up here. So like, let's say you're doing two feet of insulation, they'll, They'll mark up two feet up on the wrappers there, and then they'll staple in a piece of house wrap that goes all the way down to the soffit there. That way when they're blowing in the insulation, um, not as much of it, it you're not going to blow it all the way over to the soffit there, so you're not going to block anything. And that's just a kind of a cheap and easy way to block that off. Otherwise, there's other ways you can do it, whether it's with plywood, which would be pretty expensive to go through and um block all that off versus you know using house wrap usually have extra or even vapor barrier <coughs> excuse me which is like this plastic that you'll see uh on the roof here so like this um the, when they do the the blocking the, they'll use the, the vapor barrier in the same way as the house wrap um, a good channel to watch if you want to see something like that is our buildings um i can't remember his name uh, I think it's Matt. No, not Matt. Kyle. Kyle. Um, so what he does, he builds, he mainly builds pole barns, and every now and then he'll do something, uh, some other custom work. But in a lot of his older videos, um, you can see him when he's putting up the pole barns. Once they're, right before they go to finish the ceiling space or the attic space in their barns, he'll go through and he'll He'll staple up some house wrap and, and just the way I was just talking about before they put the roof sheeting or the ceiling sheeting on because usually they do steel sheeting for the ceiling and then they'll have an access panel cut and then once they get pretty much the interior wrapped <coughs> excuse me once you get the interior wrapped up they'll come back they have a company that comes in and they'll blow in insulation and it's just an easy way for them to go through get the whole building set up so that when the ins insulation guys come in, they don't have to crawl around up there and do any blocking or make sure that when they're blowing stuff around, they, they have to be careful about the edges. They can just go in there, blow it all around and be done with it. They don't have to um, make their job any more tedious than it already is. And in my case, I could have done some blowing insulation up here, um, but it's just easier in the long run just to do it uh, roll by roll because then I can get it underneath all these nooks and crannies versus if I had a blowing machine I gotta blow all around the rafters and try and get way over there in the corner and make sure I get underneath everything and all the wires and stuff in here and I and plus all this other stuff that's just kind of hanging around in here I'd rather just use a, a standard roll of insulation and do it that way but so now that we got everything cleared and opened up um, like I said earlier I'm going to start here. We're going to do the first four bays on this side, get this kind of section done. And then once this is done, we're going to move over 
and start from the front of the garage and work our way back this way towards the opening and then we should be good to go and be done so this hopefully shouldn't take too long I'll, I'll probably do the first these four first four bays off camera and then i'll set you guys up on a time lapse you can watch me do the rest of them because i'm not i can set the camera up over here in the corner you can kind of watch me work and it's going to be a little bit tedious because i have to do this all by myself so i got to bring each roll up individually from down in the garage and then cut it open it up roll it out cut it again to fit and then move on with the next one so this it's going to be a bit of a process but it's friday i'm done working for the week so i got nothing else better to do so i'll catch you in a little bit All right, so I'm almost done with the attic. All I have left is basically on the one end over on this side, I just have like a six to seven foot gap where the roll of insulation didn't quite cover it because these were 25 foot long rolls and the attic is about 30 feet from one side of the garage to the other. So I just need a little bit of extra just to cover that last little gap there. So what I'm doing is I'm taking these full rolls and I'm just cutting them down into quarters and with insulation it's actually pretty easy to cut it so I'm just going to use a utility blade and it it'll cut easier with a, a new blade which is kind of self-explanatory um, but even with regular fiberglass insulation like this stuff the best way to do cut it to get a nice clean cut is when you're cutting you're just going to want to you know wherever you're going to uh, cut just push it all, all the material all the way down because it'll it'll go pretty flat you know this, I think it expands up to like nine, 10 inches. And I can push it down to be maybe about an inch thick with just light pressure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna push it as far down as I can with my one hand and kind of spread my fingers around so I get both sides of the material down. And then with the blade, I'm gonna push it down that last bit and then just cut it like you would a, you know, a piece of toast or uh, you know, cutting a steak or something like that. And you get a nice, clean cut and there's really nothing to it and if for whatever reason uh, let's say you're you're doing your cut and you don't quite push all down all the way or you kind of saw it uh, 
I'll show you what that looks like. All right, so we got our next piece here. And let's say I don't quite go all the way down. I just kind of saw through it like I would, you know, like a piece of bread or something like that. All you got to do is just kind of go back through your cut. And you can kind of see what happens when you, if you don't go all the way through. It's still kind of there. And then you just kind of go back through with your blade again. And then once you get towards the bottom, you can just drag it through. And then it'll come. I mean, it's not as clean as this but at the end of the day you know insulation is meant to be hidden up in a ceiling or in your wall so it's not meant to be a showpiece so it doesn't really matter if somebody sees how clean of a cut you made or not and yeah so i just wanted to show you guys that um all i have left like i said is just to put these in and then the attic is done um and then I'll, I'll take some video so you can kind of see what it looks like. These are only, I think, 18 inches wide. And the spacing in the rafters is like 24. So there's a little gap on either side. Not the end of the world. Um, just because I'm only doing this for a little bit of extra insulation. Not for, um, let's say, like if this was like my house. Like the inside of the house, I definitely want it to be fully filled. In that case, I would use like the blow-in like I talked about earlier. That would be a good time to use that. If you want to get good solid coverage and good even coverage, that's where that blow-in insulation comes in real handy because then you don't have to worry about buying the right size or right width insulation. You just blow it in and then let it do its thing. Um, but this will conclude today's video. And if you have any comments or have any questions about what I did or what I didn't do, go ahead and uh, put it out in the comment section below. And I will do my best to answer them or direct you to a video that can answer that question for you. That's all I got for today's video. Peace out.